All right, so the last topic is quantum computing. Quantum computers are coming. They don't do anything important right now, but in the next decade or two, they'll be coming and they will break RSA encryption and other things if they end up being reasonably accurate and cheap. But right now you can easily do a simulated quantum computer in Python so you can learn how to program it. This doesn't have any of the magical features like cracking strong RSA encryption, but it lets you see how it works. So you put in uh, project Q and now you can play with simulated quantum bits and see how they work. So let me get out of here and let's make a Q1.py. Okay, so this imports um, a thing called quantum engine and it's using the main engine. And now it's gonna define a qubit, allocating a qubit. And we can look at what a qubit does. So 10 times I'm gonna allocate a qubit and measure it and then flush the quantum engine, which is what you have to do before you can print the answer and then print the observed value of that qubit. That's all that's gonna happen here. So let's run that one. Okay, and uh, oops, I gotta use Python 3 or nothing's gonna work. Okay, and so the default qubit is always equal to zero because when you make a fresh qubit, qubits have various states, but one state they have is a zero. So that is pretty boring and elementary. So let's make, let's flip that qubit with an X gate. So let me put this one up, this is Q2. All right. And all that does is it creates 10 qubits and measures them. And then it creates another 10 qubits. But before measuring them, it runs them through an X operator, which I imported up here from the library, doing an X transformation. So let's run that one. And I got to run it with Python 3. OK. So the X operator rotates at 180 degrees about the X axis, and that changes a zero to a one. So these qubits are doing just what normal bits do. Remember, normal computing bits are just zero or one, and that's all there is. And you can do that with qubits. You can use qubits as normal bits. In that case, it's just a total waste of time because they're far more expensive to build the hardware and far more complicated. But qubits do have the ability to encode a certain state of zero and a certain state of one. And that's all we've done here. But if that's all they could do, they'd be useless, no better than normal bits. The reason qubits are important is because of two essential properties, one called superposition and the other called entanglement. Those are the things that make qubits so powerful. So here's superposition. Let's put that in a file. And so here I import this thing called H, which is called a Hadamard gate. And then I just make 10 qubits and don't do anything, leave them the way they are, so they'll be at zero. And then I make another 10 qubits and I run them through the Hadamard gate, which rotates them by only 90 degrees, not 180 degrees. And we'll see what that does. Python 3, Q3. Okay, so I have the first thing, my qubits are all in state zero, but after running through the Hadamard gate, they are become uncertain. This is what's called a superposition state that is half state zero and half state one. So when you measure it, it will sometimes be one and sometimes be zero. You'll never see anything in between, and that's the crazy thing about quantum mechanics. When you measure something, you only see one value, but when you don't measure it, it's actually halfway between values and alternating or something uncertain, so you can't predict which value it'll be in. So if I run the program again, I get a different mixture of ones and zeros. It's just like flipping coins. It's different every time. It's a random process, but the superposition state has placed the qubit in an uncertain position partway between zero and one, and those uncertain states are what has the power to solve certain mathematical problems extremely fast. And you can connect them together with another property that you do not see. So in normal bits do not have these uncertain states. And another thing they do not have is this property called entanglement. So let's play with that. This one here, you import this C naught gate. The C naught gate 
creates entanglement between two qubits. So I make two qubits, qubit one and qubit two. I run one of them through a Hadamard gate to make it uncertain. So it's now in a superposition state. And then I use entanglement to make a C naught relationship between qubit one and qubit two. Now, if I did not do this, qubit two would just be a default qubit and it would always have the state of zero. But when I measure them, you're gonna see that is not true. So let's see what this one does. Python 3, Q4. Okay, this is qubit one and qubit two, qubit one and qubit two, and you can see they're uncertain, but they're always the same. So they both are one or they're both zero or they're both one or they're both zero. Every time you run it, it has a different random chance of being zeros and ones, but they're always together. So the second qubit would have just been zero, but it was entangled with the first one. So whatever the first one does, the second one goes along. And those are the magical properties. You know, remember with normal bits, if you go all the way down to the early infancy of computing, where you just do it one transistor and one bit at a time, you had bits and then you had a transistor gate that would flip it to the opposite bit. And then you had an XOR or an X AND gate, and you would just build things out of those. And in quantum mechanics, these fundamental operations are these H gates and X and Y gates and this entanglement operation. So these might seem like weird relationships, but these are the fundamental operations you can use to do programming. And it turns out that these make it possible to solve certain problems much faster than classical computers. And you can actually print out pretty little diagrams here. So if you don't um, use, if you make your engine the drawing engine instead of the main engine, you can actually get these pretty um, PDF files that draw out your circuit diagram. So here's two bits that start at zero. Let me make this bigger for the video. Okay, here's, here's one that goes through a Hadamard gate and then they are entangled, which is what this, this symbol where you have a circle and a plus sign and a line connecting it to another bit, that's entanglement. So that's one set up here. Um, and we have this symbol with a plus sign and a circle without the line, then it is an X gate, which is a rotation. So anyway, you can set up a few of these circuits and see them go and uh, understand how to do it simulated in Python. So you get the rudiments of quantum computing, understanding how these fundamental operations go. And if you look at the uh, references here, you can see the code that actually does something important. Um, I think there's, this one here does this thing called quantum teleportation. And there's another one that actually factors component numbers into their primes. It gets pretty mind boggling. Um, but here's one that does a representation of quantum teleportation. These are measurements and so on. And someplace in here, we've actually got one that does, um, this is Shor's algorithm for factoring. That's what it, I think this is it. Um, don't think I have a pretty picture of Shor's algorithm. But Shor's algorithm is the way that you can actually factor a product of two prime numbers into their fundamental primes. No, com no hardware exists right now to do it for really long public keys that are used in strong RSA. But if the number of qubits in a quantum computer go up a lot and their accuracy goes up a lot, which we imagine will happen over the next few decades, there will come a time when they can crack RSA and we'll have to switch to different public key systems, which are currently in development.